Welcome back. Moving away from matters hustle and we want to talk about the gender-based violence. This being the sixth day in the 16 days of active activism against gender-based violence, and this year's theme, according to the UN, is unite for to fight against uh, gender-based violence on women and girls. And for that, today in women at the forefront, we have a lady who's interacted firsthand with some of the women who are in prison as a result of gender-based violence. It started as gender-based violence and they ended up committing a crime and in prison. So we want to, to see how exactly does that happen? What leads to that? How can we prevent it? I'm talking about Lucy Karamu, who's the founding director of Resilient Women Africa. Karim Busan and Lucy. Thank you so much. Glad to have you with us. It's a pleasure to be here. So tell us about Resilient Women first before we get into matters of gender-based violence. We want to understand who is this resilient woman of Africa that you are fighting for? Um, a resilient woman um, is um, a community organization that uh, works with uh, socially and economically um, challenged people mm -hmm. um, in the community, mainly girls and, and women. And um, our, our focus is actually on women that are impacted by um, imprisonment. Uh, women that are impacted by gender-based violence and girls in, um, that are uh, impacted by harmful cultural practices. Mm -hmm. Yes, so um, uh, we have uh, a program for, for girls and, uh, and boys. We also have a mentorship program for women that are transitioning prison where we um, mm -hmm. mentors, um, uh, trained mentors support them through their journey of integration. And also uh, recognizing that we do not want to uh, firefight or deal with women when they have already gone to prison. We ha the, our teens program um, is a more proactive, um, uh, takes a more proactive approach to deal with issues, to impact values in the, in, the, in the boys and girls so that they are taking a different approach to handling issues. If it's conflict, you know, the way of doing things, being respectful, being um, kind to one another, just taking different approaches to resolving conflict so that they don't end up in juveniles or later in, in, in prison. Yeah. Okay. And I want to understand why exactly did you choose uh, this road to to rehabilitate ex-women convicts. Why? It's not the most popular thing to do, you know, as in the society. Yeah. So what, what inspired you to do that? I think uh, two things. One uh, is um, I had an encounter with um, a restorative justice when I did uh, a course in conflict resolution in peace studies. And for me, it was uh, such a it was like a, a light bulb moment of saying this, this is something that I would want to do because it resonated with what I believe as a person, what I believe as a Christian. And so practical, you know, um, uh, a way to really demonstrate the love of Christ as a Christian for those that really, you know, believe in Christ. For me, it, it is such a practical way of um, bringing the, the people who have been impacted by imprisonment to um, back to the community because we have been forgiven of our sins, you know. Uh, we would be in prison, many of us. We are out here by grace. We've done many things. And so when, when women and men come from prison, I think the best we can do is to support them to get back. Uh, realizing even some of the, the reasons they are actually in prison, the, the poverty related issues, you know, um, there are women that are doing petty businesses like illicit brew, you know, to put food on the table for their children. I mean, it's not to say that's not a crime because it's illegal, it's not acceptable by the government, but we are looking at what are the reasons, you know, reasons, things that are, can be prevented um, if they had alternative sources of livelihoods, those women would actually not be in prison. And so I think it's looking at um, uh, the fact that we are, they, they, they are our sisters, they are, brother, they are our sisters, brothers and sisters. Uh, what they need is, uh, you know, uh, support to get back settled and be able to support their children. And so for me, it is more of what it is that I believe as a person, as a Christian, and the fact that restorative justice is such a practical way of, you know, restoring relationships. Yeah. Okay. And you've yeah. mentioned that uh, most of the women there, or at least some of the women, uh, 
I get into prison because of petty crimes, out of poverty, things that, you know, can be easily forgiven or solved, rather, yes. if something is done to them. But what of other serious cases like murder? Have you encountered women who have, you know, gotten into prison out of murder and from a background of gender-based violence? Um, we have, yes, we have, we have clients who have been in prison because of murder. Mm -hmm. And one of the approaches that we take when we meet the women in prison, because our first contact with the women is in prison, is not for us to ask, what did you do? We allow the story to, to evolve naturally mm -hmm. because we don't want to look like we are supporting you because you did a petty crime and we are not supporting you because you did a major crime. crime. You know, All of them are crimes. And I think the important thing is to be able to support them through the journey to reintegrate. So we have them. And currently, we actually have um, uh, two uh, people, a man and a woman in Kericho prison. Um, one killed, uh, the woman killed the husband because of, of uh, infidelity issues, and they're in prison. The, the other one, uh, the, 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 the woman killed, the man killed the wife because mm -hmm. of infidelity issues. And so, uh, we, uh, where that started is, you know, the uh, violence, you know, it could be verbal, it could be emotional, it could be, you know, um, physical, it could be uh, a sexual, you know, and in the end, you know, it gets to the extreme of having the, you know, the, 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 the people, the partners kill each other, you know, and the, 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 they, they get, they end into prison, yes. Okay, but so now what the, the root cause you have said is violence can be violence yes at least so there is gender based it starts at home and then it gets to a, a place where they get to prison it gets serious where someone dies because you know the situation got out of hand yes so what needs to be done for to prevent these women who go into prison because of killing their husband out of infidelity or maybe of out of one reason or the other because they couldn't maybe find help out here and that's the only resolution that they saw I think that um, um, it's important that uh, for uh, women to know that they can share what it is that they are going through. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes, uh, I mean, we say that a, a problem shared is a problem halved. Sometimes people do not know there are others having the same experiences and they have gone through it and they have been able to resolve it in a way that did not, you know, really call for really extreme ways of handling the conflict. But for us, we are more proactive about this because we think that firefighting is, is not really going to help because, um, I mean, uh, uh, when we get to a point where, you know, there is uh, violence in the family, there is separation or extreme, uh, you know, partners killing each other, we are already, like, saying now, we are dealing with it when it has happened. Mm -hmm. Resilient woman, yes. We can prevent that before it happens. And yes. that is part of the things that you do. Yes, we can prevent mm -hmm. that before it happens. And um, at really the very, very early age um you know it is instilling values because if i have not been taught ways of handling conflict in a different way if i've not been taught that you know hitting somebody or you know or slapping someone is Wrong. bad mm -hmm. i will grow with that kind of mentality when i get into a relationship whether it is you know a married relationship or all, all that i know and this, this is, these are things that are picked from the family. All that I know is, I mean, if there is a conflict, I just slap you or hit you, you know, or do something violent, you know. And so for us, it is um, through the teens program that, that a Resilient Woman runs, we are training the boys and girls alternative ways of handling conflict. Okay. In the midst of the, of the you know, of the, the, the programs that we run, you will see a boy hit a girl or a girl hit a boy you know or they say some vulgar words you mm -hmm. know or some unkind words yeah. and at that time we know that has been picked from the from home or maybe from school and what we are saying is we are not training you to be to be fighters or soldiers you know we are training you to be useful people in the society we you can take alternative ways of, of resolving conflict. You can talk about this. You can probably report that to the teacher, you know. And um, also getting to um, the children to understand 
that the person actually that is hitting them or doing something wrong to them, the problem is actually not the person being hit. It's the, the person hitting is the one that has a problem. Mm -hmm. And so for them to really also be self-aware that there's nothing wrong with, with them now that somebody hits them or becomes violent, you know, verbally or w whatever way they are violent, it is not with them. So self-awareness, mm -hmm. training, and for them to just understand, no, it, it, there's a way, there's a different way of resolving conflict. But also in a more sustainable way, because, you know, it, the, the link is not complete until we involve parents and teachers. Mm -hmm. Because if we are supporting children to be able to take alternative ways of handling conflict and the teachers are left out, right. and what the, the children will hear from the parents is, you know... Um, uh, you are silly. You are stupid. You know you can't make it in life. You know that's those, it that's cancels all. Cancels everything that you. It teaching. cancels everything that we do. Mm -hmm. What about at home with parents? You know you cannot also amount to, to anything. Those are the words they are hearing, or they see dad and mom just eating each other. Mm -hmm. And so coming, bringing the three together, parents, teachers, and um, uh, you know, and and the children. Is uh, you know is a more sustainable way, and for us we have we have uh, we, we we have brought the parents together to let them know we are building on this, and we want you to do your role. Okay, so what I'm hearing is that it is important to instill these values from when one is a child and let them grow up with this. Yes, but. Yeah. Now, would you say that the cases that we are seeing, because there's a high number, there's been a high number of GBV, especially last year during uh, the COVID-19, the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. So would we blame this on uh, the upbringing, you know, of our men, because it's mostly the women who are affected. Could we blame that on the upbringing? I think there's the aspect of upbringing, but there's also the economic factor. Mm -hmm. You know, there's also the cultural factor. Because, um, I mean, when um, the, 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 the socialization of, uh, you know, uh, the way we have been socialized is to look at men as, you know, you are the, the provider. And if you don't provide, you know, mm -hmm. um, it's like you're not man enough, you know. And uh, during COVID uh, situation, like you mentioned, we know many people lost their jobs. Mm -hmm. Many people lost their livelihoods, you know there was a lot of struggle and the fact that um you know men would not provide even women lost their jobs so that strain mm -hmm. brought about conflict but you see the, it also comes down to what do i do when i'm pressed you know when uh, when the situation is not really good how do i handle um uh, emotion strong emotions when when uh, you uh, under, uh, when i'm under pressure as a person you know mm -hmm. how do i deal with this i mean if you go and get violent with uh, your your wife or your husband or your partner that does it not doesn't solve the yeah situation. doesn't help yeah and but yes. can we blame that on toxic masculinity because you were taught as you've said that you are the provider and when there's a problem you can't cry you can't complain so would would that be a you know a reason or an outlet for the, for them to now commit you know the violence because they have bottled it up and the person that they can they can hate is you as a as a lady there if you're the wife i mean it's uh, it's not justified um, yeah but that is the way we have been socialized mm -hmm. you know that is uh, um uh, you know uh, you have uh, the near the, the nearest target is is the person next to you is your wife is your husband um and and uh, I mean, the fact that you are you're finding yourself in that big, uh, you know, that space where you are like helpless, you cannot provide to the family. You, the nearest target is your is your is your wife or husband, but that's that's not justified. Mm -hmm. But there is an aspect of the culture, you yes. know. Mm -hmm. Uh, as in this person, uh, you know, the, my wife uh, is there to be to be seen and uh, you know to not to be heard, you know. And if I am angry, I'm just fine to hit them, you know. Mm -hmm. And in some cultures, it's still okay, even till now, to hit a woman. <laughs> you know, you are there. You you need to be corrected. You know, so that's how they have it. You you should be corrected, and the husband only beats you to correct you. And for the woman, they accept that because they don't know better. Sadly, sadly, mm -hmm. yes, yes. There are, you know, there are some communities where eating a woman is uh, showing love, uh, you know, sadly. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that is really, really a retrogressive, uh, you know, uh, thinking um, because um, 
I mean, there, there's nothing, uh, there's not nothing great about, there's nothing loving about hitting somebody, you know, that you love. In the first place, your husband and wife, you go together because you loved each other. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of awareness that needs to be created around, you know, violence of that kind. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing, uh, you can't tell me that you love me because you, you're, you're hitting me. You're hitting me, yeah. Because, yeah, because you love me or you're correcting me. So how Again, do we change those cultures? How do how, what's your perspective on that? How can we do something about it? Because they are deeply ingrained and it's hard to change it. I, we, again, we begin mm -hmm. um, in instilling that, uh, the, the, the values and the attitudes and the beliefs when children are young. Yeah. You know, and to point out the wrong, the, the, the harmful cultural practices you know uh, the, you know what why uh, why would a child be taught that when your sister does something wrong you hit them but they are not told i mean the vice versa cannot happen so it is giving the boys or men power and like t showing uh, the, the the girls that it's okay actually for my brother to hit to hit me mm -hmm. so they need to be told right from the beginning there's nothing right in, about eating your, 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 your sister, you know, so, it is wrong. And to also be, uh, bring out the aspect of who, who is a real man. So yeah, exactly, know. I wanted to ask you that. Do we need to change the understanding of what it means to be a man in the African setup? Yes, I think that, is, that needs to really be, be, be brought out because a real man, mm -hmm. girls should be, understand that is, is, a, is, a, is a one that protects them, is a one that respects them, is, a one, is one that is kind to them, mm -hmm. you know, is a one that will go the extra mile to ensure that they are protected. And doing uh, wrong things to them including if, even uh, sexual abuse does not make them you know real men there's nothing right about that mm -hmm. and so girls girls need to um to, to understand that but yeah. boys also need to be brought on board in these discussions so that yeah. we are not just talking telling girls you know you need to keep away boys you need to uh, you know to protect your, yourself away from uh, boys Boys, boys and girls need, to be, need to, be, to be yeah they need to be part of the conversation because if you empower girls and you're telling them no um abusing girls you know uh, sexual violence rape you know and all those things that boys will do to girls is wrong you're telling the girls and the boys are not available they are not there to you why is it even wrong you know, mm -hmm. because the, the so culture tells on. them that. Mm -hmm. They'll keep, they'll, they'll continue to do that. So, so involvement of both boys and girls in these conversations is really, really important. So you're saying it's not enough for a man to be just there and say, I don't support gender-based, you know, to say, rather, that they do not uh, perform gender-based violence. They don't take part in gender-based violence. So they should take the extra mile and speak up against gender-based violence also. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. That, that brings really a lot of value in the conversation because and also um, encouraging a men that have experienced violence i mean we are the statistics show that one out of three women mm -hmm. have experienced some form of of, of uh, violence in their lives but we also have uh, gen uh, violence against men one out of four have experienced violence in their lives okay. and so encouraging men to come out and mm -hmm. talk about the, the experiences that they have had yeah. and normalizing it because uh, mm -hmm. what what the what the, what the, in the discourse um, mm -hmm. around gender based violence um, it, the focus is on on women yeah so normalize talking about um, gender based violence relating to men on all sides on all sides yes mm -hmm. yeah and what about speaking about it you know statistics also have it that 40 percent of those that are victims of gender-based violence uh, or rather it's actually less than 40 percent of women who experience violence seek help of any sort being that the 60 percent actually remain silent so I'm, I'm imagining that the rate of men is even higher because it's hard for a man to say that I've experienced gender-based violence so what do we do about the victims speaking up and not feeling victimized about it um, I think like we've said, it's um, normalized talking about the experiences that both men and women have, the, uh, the gender-based um, uh, violence mm -hmm. ex experiences that they have, but also um, uh, bringing on board um, 
uh, having for, uh, forums where uh, men can actually share. You know, mm -hmm. they can share their stories and how it happened. Um, they also, um, working in partnership with, uh, with the, uh, the, the police, you know, yeah. I know when there are cases that are reported of, uh, you know, gender-based violence, sometimes they are really trivialized, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the, the victim is blamed. And mainly the girls and, 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 and women are, are blamed. You know, you are told, you, you, you know, to, to, to experience that kind of violence, you know, yeah. you, you dress up inappropriately. And inappropriate b b dressing uh, does not necessarily mean, I mean, um, uh, uh, justify uh, violence by by, by men to, to girls yeah. um, and so it, it is important to um, I just uh, have um, that uh, an integrated approach yes an mm -hmm. integrated so uh, so that um, we are not just focusing on on um, we are we're not focusing on men, women and girls we are focusing on both uh, women girls and, and, and men okay yes and and the, uh, creating mm -hmm. forums where are uh, these boys and girls that have experienced violence or men and women that have experienced violence can actually have a safe space to be able to talk about it because um you you have experienced violence for example a boy has maybe been sodomized in in the family yeah. and and um and the uncle that has done it tells them if you're going to talk about this tell anyone in the family i'm gonna kill you yeah. So empowering girls, knowing that uh, to t to let them know that um, violence by anyone mm -hmm. is not right. It's wrong. And you can have a safe space for you to talk about it, and nothing is going to happen to you. And then ensuring that the child has been protected against uh, mm -hmm. uh, from this this perpetrator. Okay. So Lucy, yeah. we're going to take a short break, and then we'll come back to talk about these safe spaces because where are these safe spaces when you go to the police station uh maybe you might find so from other stories that they have been victimized there when you go so where else do you go for up you know from the when you get from the police station who else do you see after that and there are cultures that don't even want you or allow you to go and report it to the police station so what do you do from there when you're being affected by GBV maybe in your marriage and uh, or maybe you've been sexually assaulted what do you do after that without being left with the feeling of victimization so let's take this short break and then we'll be right back to continue with this conversation stick with us Welcome back. This is still Good Morning Kenya. Thank you for staying with us. We continue with a conversation on gender-based violence. And for that, we have Lucy Karambu to talk us through this because she has had experience with people or women who have experienced gender-based violence and one, one or the other found themselves in prison and she's trying to reintegrate them back into the society after they have served their time in prison. So before we went to the break, we were talking about creating the safe space for the victims of of gender-based violence so Lucy you're telling us about some of these spaces how do you find such spaces when everything is trying to silence you culture tells you or your family because of culture tells you you shouldn't report on this because you won't find a husband that is mostly in the rural setup uh, because you won't find a husband so you, especially for uh, victims of rape and where, for those that live in the urban setup and you know that you can go to a police station you go there but you don't really get the attention that you want or the reception that you would wish for in fact you are victimized for it but i believe that there's some <laughs> changes that are taking place now even with the cs for genders uh, actively say uh, speaking against gender-based violence so what do you think what are some of these safe spaces 
Um, uh, yeah, before I talk about uh, safe spaces, um, mm -hmm. I, I just wanted to point out what uh, the aspect of culture, mm -hmm. um, of uh, you know, silencing. I think uh, some aspect of culture, some aspect of culture, um, encourages us to just sweep things under the carpet mm -hmm. and not, uh, you know, talk about things. And there is nothing. There, there is nothing right about that. Uh, so um, uh, the, the first thing is. Uh, empowering the the, the 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 girls or the women to be able to talk about to to just let them know that they have they can speak about what it is that they are going through and directing them to resources like you know like um lines you know um that that uh, counseling or mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, f phone numbers that they can call to organizations like um you know like the Nairobi women's hospital has got a gender based violence um arm mm -hmm. that support a lot of women that are uh, impacted by gender based violence and many sexual uh, you know sexual violence so there are there are spaces um and uh, we also have uh, other organizations besides the hospital that have uh, that support people who are impacted by gender-based violence so mm, the beginning is to create awareness and to speak about it um, to share information about what's happening and mm. the resources that are available for the people who have been impacted by uh, gender-based violence okay yes. and would you say that social media is one of the spaces how effective is social media in the fight against the GBV I think it is. It is because I think we've seen uh, we've seen um, a lot of issues highlighted through social media. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know where uh, you know a woman has been battered. You know they have been beaten. You know almost to really uh, death, and some of them have been killed, and that has been through social media. So mm -hmm. social media is a really really powerful tool. I think it is good to really um, be able to verify the information that is being shared and to um, also know that um, it is important to have the people who have been affected protected, especially if they are children. I think the aspect of protection is important, but um, the social media is really a powerful tool to, to use to um, highlight the plight of, of, of women and girls. Okay. Yes. And what about social media and victimization also on social media because it's easy. Uh, because I had a story of a victim of gender-based violence who after some years, around two years, was now speaking about her experience and speaking against to GBV and people were asking her what what is the evidence you know what why did why are you only telling of it now why didn't you report your case then so what what about that what should we do as uh, people who are in the social media space I think it's important this? to understand that we come from a point of being disempowered to a point of being empowered and growth for everyone is a journey Mm -hmm. um, we know girls and women who are really quiet with something, but the, 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 the conversation is happening. They are being enlightened. And at a point, they know, mm -hmm. I am afraid now, but I know a time is coming when I'm going to really talk about this. So yeah. there's, uh, we come from a place of being disempowered to a place of being empowered. And you know also, there, there's an the aspect of where you, people are really dependent on their partners. Mm -hmm. You know? And some people are really afraid of like uh, saying i just want to leave some will say i will remain because of my my children yeah. you know um and and so once there is empowerment in terms of being able to support their own needs mm -hmm. they, they are not going to stay so at that time might, might be the right time for them to talk about it and i'm, I'm not saying mm -hmm. if you do not have a, a source of income you stay in the, in, the, in, the, in the relationship, you know, a violent relationship. Yeah. But I'm saying we come from a point of being disempowered to a point of being empowered. And that's the right time that, you know, many people will talk about uh, the experiences that they have had. Okay, so yes. it's a matter of using the social media in the right manner. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And the people listening, they also, I think it's also lack of awareness. Mm -hmm. the response and the backlash that comes on people yeah. who have shared their stories, people do not really know. There are people, who, and, the, and there is a mindset, the cultural mindset of, you know, why are you even talking about this on social media, you know? Mm -hmm. It's so embarrassing to us. It's embarrassing to the family. But what is, 
what is good about being battered and remaining in a violent relationship that would some uh, many times would even uh, lead to, to, to death. Mm -hmm. So there is lack of sensitization and awareness about the issues by many people. And so that explains the backlash. Okay. that people would experience here. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And moving to uh, what you do, you deal in uh, restorative justice instead of uh, the other type of retributive justice. justice. Retributive justice. Yes. yes. Yeah. So have you had cases, because you have also interacted with men who are from prison, integrating them back into the society, have you had cases of men, or even on the other side of women, who are Vict or not victims, perpetrators of gender-based violence and are actually now, uh, f you know, repentant about it and they want to change and they want to now speak against it and help the others in the society. Yeah, yes, experience, um, uh, they, they are, we, we have clients that, uh, that got into prison because of, uh, you know, um, violence against their partners mm -hmm. and, you know, assault and, you know, and uh, sexual violence, you know, rape. And uh, they, when they come out, they talk about it. And um, it is for them uh, a point to learn. And one of the conversations that we had with one of our clients from mm -hmm. Nakuru mm -hmm. um, is uh, she said that one of the things I want to do with my experience is to be able to go to schools, you know, and let children know that crime can actually take you to, to, um, to, 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 to jail and you can prevent it. Mm -hmm. you know so there, there are many many um, uh, um, um clients that have come out and they are using their experiences positively it's transforming their their you know mm -hmm. um, their, 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 their pain into you know something more Benefit. valuable mm -hmm. and more useful to the society okay yes. and from the stories that they share uh on still on matters gender-based violence that they committed what is the underlying factor what is the cause what was going through their mind when they were committing such uh, heinous acts um many of them would say i wish i knew you know i wish i mm -hmm. knew better um there is the aspect of 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 culture you know of um, you are uh, by really instilling this kind of of, of pain or uh, you know uh, taking I mean uh, being violent in in certain ways is mm -hmm. is uh, makes you a, a real person a man you know others it is experiences in childhood mm -hmm. where the best way they learned about doing things is is being violent they saw their their mothers do that they saw their 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 fathers do that they saw the, the way of resolving conflict it is it is fighting in the family and so that was carried forward you know and including even the kind of the, the nature of relationship that that mm -hmm. that uh, our parents have between each other you know lack yeah. of respect to each other you know like being you know a strong person and hitting some someone and being sexually assault, um, you know assaulting uh, sexually yeah. it's making somebody uh, uh, a, a, a real man you know mm -hmm. and the the the, I, the the knowledge or the um, the kind of attitude around uh, you know um if i sleep with with the, with the girl you know mm -hmm. that really makes me a uh, a man. A man. Yeah. You know, that needs to, 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 to be really, um, uh, there needs to be a lot of sensitization around that. And uh, for the boys to know that it's actually disrespectful, it's wrong. That, is, it, that is wrong. It doesn't, there's nothing um, manly about assaulting a girl, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. sexually, yeah. Okay, yes. and let us now go to the children, the effects that it has on children as they grow up. Because you've said it's usually from a background of how you are raised. And you give the recent case that you're dealing with of a woman who actually was the one who killed uh, the husband in sight with, with a child on sight, you know? Yes, the, the yes, child the child was actually present. This. Yes. So what will that do to such a child in such cases? Uh, the impact on this child is, is, is massive. It is, it is beyond imagination mm -hmm. because uh, the child is held up. It's, it's actually, 
in between two people. They love their father, they love their mother. Mm -hmm. And you've just but seen your mother killing yeah, your father. Yeah, you've seen your father kill, um, you know, your, your mother kill your father, your father kill your, your, mother. your mother, because those are two recent cases where we have a man and a woman in prison uh, having killed their partners on, because of the infidelity, cases of infidelity. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, uh, to a child, is uh, traumatizing. It has a long term Im impact on them. They will not even believe in relationships, mm -hmm. for one. It will take a lot of work for them to really know. I can, I can actually, um, you know, get into a relationship with, 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 with a girl or a boy, and we can get married and live together, you know. Without in, fighting. Without fighting. That's, mm -hmm. that's really, it's something that really has to take a lot of work. But besides that, um, the child is actually um, in this specific case where the woman uh, killed the, the husband, there are three children who have been left. And their fallback position or the support they have, the immediate support, is uh, their grandmother who is alcoholic. So these children are totally exposed. They have no one to take care of them. Everything about their life has just Everything changed has changed all a of a sudden. Mm -hmm. It is, it is, it is I, I, I don't know, it's, 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 it's really painful. It is, um, it just tells us why it is important to, um, you know, to stop gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. Not just because of the partner's issues or uh, husband and wife. The children really, really suffer. They, their life is totally affected. Their relationships is affected. affected. Their interactions with others is affected. Their self-esteem is affected. Their academic work is affected. The total Everything life of a child is really changes. affected. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because now they are dealing with fear. You know, they are like, oh, my dad has gone. Now my mom is in prison. My grandma is not My grandma is an alcoholic, so mm -hmm. who is protecting me? Who do so they it's, have? it's really it's um I just uh, gets to us uh, to to just say um we are not focused. This conversation should actually not be just violence against women and girls. It is what does violence against women, girls, and men do have to children? On children, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. yes, because the total the the the, the aftermath is uh, or the the, the result, the consequences is directly impacting on mm -hmm. on children on children yes and we can see a cycle from the, I, I believe that's when the cycle now picks up because this is what you saw and that's yes. the only thing you know so the cycle yes. continues so unless something is done we can yes yes we'll be unless, talking about the same thing unless something is done and i don't believe it is really hopeless mm -hmm. because i know there are there are, there are people there are there are there are, there are children who have come um, from very violent families mm -hmm. and very abusive where their their parents you know just told them you're not going to go um, uh, to total to, to amount to anything and the, their self-esteem was affected but through programs like what resilient woman is doing mm -hmm. and other organizations supporting them through mentorship it is mm -hmm. possible to change it is possible to really have their path of life change and because they will be exposed to mentors they'll mm -hmm. be exposed to um they'll be exposed to people who have gone through the same journeys and they have success they have succeeded so i don't think it's, it's totally hopeless uh but there's a lot of work to be done okay yes. and what type of mentorship as we come to a close on this yeah. what type of mentorship do the children go through children that have this type of trauma uh, when uh, we begin by wanting to know what it felt like to have their mom and dad in prison because mm -hmm. we want to hear their story we want to hear what does does it what do they even feel about what happened mm -hmm. so that then we begin the journey from there so our mentorship is around uh, just letting them know um, uh, to be able to come to terms with it, but also to know they have a support system. Mm -hmm. We are there. We, we you know we we uh, we we are there as 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 their mentors. They have other resources in the community. You know they have pastors. Yeah. They have community leaders. They have aunties. You know, mm -hmm. and just remaining in touch with them. We recognize that um, uh, because resilient women support uh, 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 support children impacted by imprisonment with sp education sponsorship, mm -hmm. 
it is not enough to just sponsor the children. Mm -hmm. Because these children are social beings, they're emotional, they're psychosocial, they're spiritual, and so the other aspects of their lives need to be really supported. Yeah. And so we take an approach of uh, looking at their spiritual life, their personal life, their, you know, academic life, you know, um, every aspect of the child, so that we are not just looking at a child as an academic object. Okay. Because you can have a, a guru, you know, who yeah, is really totally broken psychologically then yeah they're okay. totally broken and so we want mm -hmm. to to really like put that aside a bit say we are supporting that that's good enough but we also want to look at the the other aspect of the child so that this child is equipped for life mm -hmm. and be able to deal with the experiences that they have had to look forward with hope you know to just know that mm, bad things happen but i can make it because other people that i'm interacting with have made it and that they are not their parents yes and then also story. to know that they are not to blame for what happened mm -hmm. and they can take a different approach to resolving conflict okay yes and do you get them to uh, do you mend their relationship with that parent for instance in this case where the mother committed murder against their father do you help them in that relationship interestingly mm -hmm. this uh, boy that witnessed the mom kill the dad um our uh, mentors and coordinators of the ground they organized for them to go see the mom in prison and he went how was it uh emotional uh because i think he's doing it from i love my mom i love my dad mm -hmm. and so he's torn in between uh, but just getting to know that has happened, but there's still a tomorrow for them, mm -hmm. and things can actually change. And um, they don't, they are not to blame for what happened because many times what happens is children say, you know, are now elderly, they are, uh, they find themselves in between and saying, I will, if probably I am the one that caused this to happen. So um, it is just encouraging them to. Um, uh, take a different way of, of, of resolving conflict, supporting them and counseling them mm -hmm. because the, the, the experience of uh, seeing uh, your, your dad killed, it is, it is traumatizing. It can be traumatizing. Yes. And okay, so why do you do this as we come to a close again? Why do you do this? What fuels your passion? Um, because I think that I have a space. Mm -hmm. And that space can only be filled by me. And they say that, you know, if you want, uh, you occupy, everyone of us can occupy their space to see the change that we want in the world. Mm -hmm. I think I love uh, seeing uh, people's situations change. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's such a joy to see a family that has been impacted by imprisonment coming back together again children beginning to to go to school beginning mm -hmm. to live together with the, with with their parents uh, you know um and the, and the women reintegrating into the society getting social networks beginning to to really go to church join chamas you know and begin to really uh, thrive again wow i think for me that is really exciting that is very noble yeah. of you to do and we're celebrating you today at in women at the forefront finally Thank you so what much. change do you want to see in matters gender-based violence and as you close you can give us your social handles um uh, what changes do i want to see um uh, in uh, matters gender-based violence i think one is to talk more about it mm -hmm. and uh, to normalize talking about uh, the experiences, the violence that we experience at the family level, but focus on the experiences of men and bringing men and women on, uh, men and boys on board in the conversation because we are not going anywhere awesome. until we uh, sensitize men and boys. Because we need to understand what is in their mind. Why would a boy go raping a girl? Why would, you know, a man go hitting a, a woman in, you know? So getting their mind is part of the conversation to be able to shape the programs that we are doing. Okay. Yeah, awesome. and uh, to what get to us, um, uh, resilient, W-O-A is our Twitter handle. 
Our Facebook is Resilient Woman of Africa and uh, in um, LinkedIn, Resilient Woman. Thank you very much, Lucy, for gracing us in this interview. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Stephanie. I really appreciate uh, right. you having me. Welcome. That Thank has you. been Lucy Karambu, the founding director of Resilient Woman, talking to us on how we can help in this fight of gender-based violence from the experience she has had with the women and men who have been in prison out of one of these reasons, gender-based violence. That has been a great conversation there. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, good morning, Kevin. Kenya comes to comes to an end at this particular point. My name is Stephanie Yata, and on behalf of the team, we wish you a great uh, day ahead. Enjoy the rest of your viewing. Bye bye.